Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 45 of my Java video tutorial series. I've received a bunch of emails from you guys asking me to cover XPath, so in this tutorial, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I don't normally use XPath. I use something called JDOM to read and write from XML files, but XPath is perfectly good at grabbing information from XML files, and today I'm going to show you how to do that. Well, I'm going to just come over here into Eclipse, new file. And I'm going to call this Java Lesson 45.java. Finish. So let's just jump in here. Of course, we have to get ourselves some libraries. And this first one that we're going to get here is going to provide everything you need to work with the DOM, the DOM tree, which is what's going to be created from the XML file whenever we go and get it. And just so you know exactly what is contained inside of this library, it contains pretty much everything. So it's going to contain document. It's going to contain element. It's going to contain the node. It's going to contain node lists. It's going to contain contain text. It's going to contain all your exceptions, of course, and a whole bunch of other different things. But that's the main thing we're going to have. And it's node list, not node list. And then we're going to come in here and get our XPath library. And it's just Java X xml.xpath. Like I said before, it's going to allow us to go in and really quickly grab pretty much anything from an XML file. And then next, we're going to grab all of our parsers for working with XML. So again, this is going to be Java X dot XML dot parsers. And to elaborate on that, that's going to be document builder, document builder factory, and SAX parser, which we went over in the last part of the tutorial. And then, of course, we're going to need to catch all of our different potential exceptions that weren't covered above. So IO exception is definitely going to be one that we're going to need to catch. And also, we're going to need to catch any exceptions that are thrown by SACS, which again stands for Simple API for XML. And to do that, we're just going to go org XML SACS. Sax exception, and there you go, we got that guy too. Now we gotta create our class here, Java Lesson 45. You're gonna be really surprised by how easy this is to work with. So I'm just gonna go public static void main string, just like we've done a hundred times. And we're gonna go document builder factory, which again is gonna allow your app to get a parser that's gonna turn the XML document that you have into the DOM tree that you're then gonna be able to play around with and mess around with all the elements and nodes and everything else inside of it. Document builder factory and just go new instance and there you go now you got all that ready to go and then we're also going to need to provide for xml namespaces if necessary and if you saw my xml tutorial you know what a namespace is and if you haven't go watch it and then we need to go document builder and create the builder for ourselves here and then i'm going to set document equal to null and document builder is going to turn the XML into the DOM tree that I just keep talking about here. And then we're going to throw everything in a try block. And then we're going to go builder DOM factory. And this is going to parse the file that we supply. New document builder. And then we're going to feed into doc, which is going to be the document that we're going to be playing with that's going to be held inside of memory. We're going to fill that up with all the information that's going to be stored in our XML file. And everything on this tutorial is available in a link underneath of the video, just like always. And of course it's free. Sometimes people think I charge for that. And that's just silly. And then we're going to have to catch everything. Why don't we do it in the nice, lazy, easy way? Let's get rid of the try block altogether. And then this is going to throw a fit. And I can just say, surround with try catch block. And then this is going to throw a fit. And I can say, surround with try multi catch block, right like that. And then I can just go like this. And then I can just cut this out. Out of here throw that down there and then we can just get rid of this see it wasn't that a lot easier and then we're going to call xpath because that's the whole point of doing this tutorial and you do that by going xpath factory and this guy is going to allow you to grab data from the document that we're going to be using different codes below to do that and you pretty much do the same thing over and over again so feel free to copy and paste it's the easiest way to do it and then i'm going to actually call a method here get node name and value and then i'm going to pass to it the document that i'm working with here and xpath so of course i'm going to have to create this method and i'm going to go private static void like that and then this is a document type and this guy right here is an xpath type so pretty simple throw my curly braces inside of there and also there's going to be another one of these down here to close the class and this boy right here is tied to main so i'm going to leave it like that all right so then we basically have to issue a query kind of like you would with sql but nowhere near as fancy so 
and that's going to be an expression. And I'm going to go create an object that's going to hold the results of this query. And I'm going to set it to null. And then I'm going to create another try block here. And then we have to define exactly what we're going to be looking for. And you can look for all kinds of really cool stuff. But we're going to start off simple and then we're going to go and get a little bit more complicated. So then we're going to go compile and then inside of here you're going to define your expression. Now let's say that I wanted to display every single name in my XML file. So here we are. Here's the name tags right here and there's one of our TV shows. So to get to that, now remember the root is TV show, then show, then name. So TV show, show, name. Okay, remember that. Now to get to that, all we're going to do is go two forward slashes and then show, which is what we're going to get, and then we're going to get name, and then two forward slashes and text. And that's going to give us every single name that we have inside of our XML file. So then we can close that off. Don't worry, it's going to get a lot more complicated than that. And then we're going to go result, I mean, it's not going to be complicated to do. It's just going to be get more complicated information. And then you get your result here, and you're going to run this XPath query constants right like that. And that's what that guy's going to do for you. And then again, if I want to be lazy, I can get rid of the try block, have this throw a fit, put my mouse over top of it, and then go surround with try catch. And that's exactly what it did. Now, of course, this is still having a little fit here, so let's just copy that and paste that in there. So that's going to catch any XPath exceptions that are thrown. And then if we want to output the results of our query, we're going to create a node list is equal to, and then we're going to have to cast this to a node list, the result that is, right like that. And then we're going to create a for loop here, and I'm just going to cycle through everything. I'm going to say i is less than nodes, and I can get the length of my node list, just that simply. And then we're going to cycle through our results. And how we're going to do that, and this is a little bit of a new thing to do here. I'm going to go print line, and I'm going to go nodes. And then I'm going to say that I want item, and it's going to be whatever the first result is, since it's starting with zero here. And then I'm going to say that I want to get the parent node. Remember, the data itself is inside of a node. So if I want to get the parent node's name, which in this situation is going to be name itself, if this is what I'm searching for right here, what's in between the name tags, and if I want to get the parent node, which is going to be name in this situation, I need to go get parent node exactly like that. So that's going to give me the name so that I know what the field is. And then I can go get node name right like that and then throw some spaces in there to be nice. And then I'm going to bounce down to the next line to keep this separated and I'm going to go nodes dot item and I'm just going to ask for the index itself this time. And then I'm going to say get node value and there you are. And that's going to give me both the node name as well as the node value. And that's it. Now, of course, I'm going to do more complicated expressions here, but if we file save that and run it, you're going to see right here, it printed the node name, which is name, and then each one of the names of the shows. So you say, well, I'm not impressed with that. I want to see something more complicated. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to show everything. Well, just come in here and replace name with a star. That's it. You just changed one little thing. Now, this is going to be dirty, but if I wanted to show everything there is, see, there's everything. Here's every node name. Here's every piece of data that's stored in the entire XML file. Now, of course, you could take this crazy looking thing here and cut out things like the actors and actors nodes which are these guys over here see actors is a child of show and then actor is a child of actors and then real name and characters and da 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 so you can play around that's your homework assignment you guys are always asking me for homework so let's say I wanted to show names based on an attribute so let's come in here again where the star is currently and let's say that I only wanted to show a name if it had a specific attribute so again attributes start with an at sign ID if I only wanted to show the show that had the ID code of show underscore 001, closing bracket like that, file save it, and that's exactly what it does. It gives me name and life on Mars, which is over here, see, show one, and it just gives me this one right here. So there you are, and I can get even more complicated with it. Let's say that we wanted to show those actors and character names because they were coming up wrong before. How exactly would we do that? Actually, it's pretty easy. Bounce this back here, and then we're going to say actors. So you can sort of like, let's see, I'm just going to grab a different child instead of grabbing name like I've been grabbing over and over again. Like this, and then like this, and then file save it. 
And there you go. Now it's going to show the real name and the character. See, it's actually grabbing things from two different fields at once for every single person that's in any of the television shows that I'm working with. And as a final example, let's say that we only wanted to show actors in which a character has the profession of a student. This is pretty much going to cover everything you could ever want to do with XPath in these couple examples. So I'm going to go character and I'm going to say at and I'm going to say I want to know if their profession is equal to student and if it is is, well then I want to show those people and if it isn't I don't want to show them and execute and proceed and there you can see character Lindsay Weir and Sam Weir both show up and everything else is disregarded so there is a run through of how to use XPath inside of Java like I said before in the next part of the tutorial I'm going to show you how to both read and write information to an XML file and then we're going to move on to other different issues inside of Java leave all your questions and comments below otherwise till next time